Some of you may have heard that Sam Bankman Freed has a sex tape coming out. And when you see that sex tape, you may see two large men uh, wearing ski masks that very closely resemble me and Danny Polishek. Yes. Just want to say that that was not us. That was not me. Me and him spent a couple days on the polycule. So when there are polycule flight logs coming out, you will see us. But well, those are two completely separate totally. men. Totally. I mean, we were just in the Bahamas for an unrelated thing. Very, very unrelated. We swung by the polycule for a second. Yes, the guy has the same tattoos than me, but they're very common tattoos. Yeah, and the brand that that guy has is similar to the brand that I got at Nexium, but... That's a Nexium, and also the guy at a boys cast anybody. tattoo, which could literally be anyone, the le- any one of the legions of fans. Mm-hmm. Um, and when that comes out, you might see me and Danny holding hands and going, oh, <laughs> as Sam Bankman Fried gives both of us head. Yeah. That wasn't us. That was not us. That could have both, literally been both anyone. Of imposters. At one point, the guy in the ski mask does look at the camera and say, please follow the boys <laughs> cast. That could be anyone. That could be any boys cast. There's a lot of. There's, there's a lot of boys you don't cast? think it's maybe the show the boys it could be the show the boys that could easily That's, be and then one these. of the men that is part of the boys yeah potentially that was there we got peed on but again not us yeah but we got peed on by the chick we took turn you will see a guy that Golden maybe Shadows. resembles danny polishuk uh at one point he yelled uh death to palestine <laughs> The man who is not Danny, as he was grabbing the hair yeah. of the girl in David Bankman Fried's hair. Sam, Sam Bankman Fried. Sam Bankman Fried. I don't even know the guy's I don't name. Don't even know the name. How could you? Yeah, it could, it could not be us. And yeah, definitely the guy who was yelling, I'll never lose all of my money in FTX. That was not <laughs> me either. <laughs> that also could have been anyone. <laughs> not me. The guy. My money is definitely safe in FDX. Not me. Everyone should join. Danny was the guy who maybe resembles Danny was uh, at one point. Uh, he had one finger in David Bankman Fried's ass. <laughs> Sam. One, <laughs> this one finger in Sam Bankman Fried's ass. One finger in the girl holding them both like bowling yeah, balls. Bowling balls, yeah. And then, at, and then while still screaming, anybody who doesn't put their money in FTX <laughs> is a moron. I said, have fun staying poor, <laughs> losers. Yeah. At one point, the guy who was not me yeah. did have a stop being poor t-shirt on, yeah. which he then ripped off Hulk Hogan style. And that, again... Could have been anyone. Anyone. Wasn't us. Was not us. So just want to, yeah, we just want to make that clear to the boys cast listeners when that does come out. Yeah, because there's talks that this will be, there will be a sex team being released. Yes. So anyways, I just thought we should get that off our chest. Just a little, yeah, just off the top. The boys. The boys cast. The lads. The boys cast. The dudes. Prepare yourself for boys cast. The bros. You know what I was thinking of? Because everyone right now, every day, there's a new video of a guy that goes and uh, uh, throws like a, bu- a bucket of paint on the paintings. And yeah, then- yeah, and the soup and the glue. And- <laughs> yeah, they're, they're running out of ideas because they've been doing so much of it, right? Yeah. But um, to me, I was just thinking there's such a funny idea of every kid that ever is like a vandalism guy just saying it's for the environment. Like your mom coming in. Oh, just everything. This is a protest. I spitballed my teacher because to stop the global warming. I I broke this window at this church. (laughs) Yeah. Accidentally. Everything I did. Not accidentally. Every single thing I've ever done when I got expelled. Like, yeah, well, I'm sorry that I care about the environment. (laughs) Oh, I'm sorry. Did you and your friends go rip the Mercedes Benz logos off a bunch of cars last night? Yeah. Yeah. They're Nazis, first off. And secondly, <laughs> it's a protest against the environment. Everything I do destroyed. is for a protest now. Yeah, did you punch like your <laughs> elderly teacher in the face? Yeah, do you know how much carbon that guy was using with every breath? <laughs> you know, I can't argue with that. He kept farting, and you know. <laughs> Yeah, when you whenever someone when, when you're out with someone and then they fart and you call doorknob and you beat them up, that's because you were not happy with all the yeah, emissions. Yeah, it's the emissions. Yeah, yeah, you're going contributing it's, it's, to global their, their warming. Their ESG score was poor. So this is there's not much more to this story that I'm about to say. Yeah, probably one of the shortest, sweetest stories. Russia Today. Yeah, which is Russian uh, media today. today. And uh, the, there's like a guy that's a. I guess it's like a general or something. Like He's that. something in the army. Something in the army. And he goes, 
Around 10% of the volunteers who go to the front lines are there because their wives probably accust- have probably been accustomed to a decent life and are nagging, nagging, nagging. So yeah. he says, and he went on. 10 seems low, to be honest. <laughs> You said that 10, you're like, that's it? Just 10? 10% of the guys in the Russian army are there because their wives won't stop nagging them. Yeah. I mean, you know how many guys are like in non-war warring countries, the wives are nagging them and they're just like, God damn, I wish I could enlist in the military. I'm too I've old, been though. there. Yeah. You know what I mean? Put a couple extra tour dates on the books. <laughs> <laughs> of course. You go, listen, there was option one is I'm going to foxhole with the boys. Yeah. Chilling. Or option two is stop putting your feet on the table. Yeah, for sure. All that you go, fuck, I'll take my chance. Take the garbage out. You never take, take my the garbage. Chances getting trench foot. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. I'd rather get trench foot than be told what to where to put it. <laughs> Girl, uh, telling you some inconvenient method like, I want you to put your shoes in the closet when well, no, we don't want the shoes in the closet. You know when the army doesn't tell me where yeah. to they might they may. I mean they it's possible will. the they army will. does have some rules they have where to some put. rules about where the shoes go. <laughs> that is funny. But though. during wartime, it's probably like a lot of the rules are going out the window. You never talk to me. Well, that, yeah, it's hard when I'm about to join the army. Yeah, when uh the the enemy's spying and listening to all our conversations, we have to keep <laughs> everything to a minimum. <laughs> Why don't you want to talk about your feelings? The Ukrainians. Yeah, the only feelings I have are the love of Russia. I'll tell you what. Who's better, like an Instagram hoe wife or Ukraine at securing the bag? (laughs) That's a good point. One's a Gucci bag and one is, you know, $80 billion in financing. Billy. Yo, they still, they just secured like a nice bag. Oh, I mean, it's just nonstop. It is funny, too, that all of the people that voted for... All, I, I've been bugging people about this because, you know, a lot of people that voted to get their student loans wiped or whatever and be like, student, you st- they didn't wipe the student loans. They Russia just... Or Ukraine just secured another bag. <laughs> Ukraine is... Fucking- oh, really? You're still paying uh, interest on your student loans? <laughs> on your worthless degree, huh? Weird. Anyways, Ukraine's... Uh, that psychology right. degree, eh? You're still fucking just paying out. Interesting. <laughs> Russia just... Ukraine, the Ukraine uh, military, they just paid for their degrees. <laughs> I think they just paid off their student loans. Oh, they paid off every one of their loans. They paid off Ukrainians' uh, gay bathhouse <laughs> memberships. They're n- nothing stopping. Oh no, no. But uh, I honestly, ten percent low. If uh, there's a point of nagging, I mean, guys kill themselves. Right. So it's like to go defend your country that you love. The only probably somewhat. Uh, I think, the, and the guy tried to backtrack and be back, like, yeah. yeah, he walked and back you know a why? Because the fucking hens started clucking again. <laughs> the hens started clucking, and the Russian mothers are actually a uh, big yeah. congregate. I know. But they just literally, they, they go, we don't nag, and then they proceeded to nag him into backtracking. <laughs> yeah, it is a sort of... <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, yeah, it is. It is sort of a like funny statement though, because if anything, that would be good. Where you're like, wives, turn the nagging up to a hundred. Yeah, well, let's win this thing. Exactly, right? Yeah, but no. Anyways, that's making me laugh. Good one. I like that one. So I've been honestly kind of loving the fact that uh, the Trump and DeSantis is fighting, right? Yeah. And so if you, I don't know if you've seen, but basically. I'm sure I'm well, I'm going to take that back. I'm sure you've seen. I'm sure you've seen. But the funny part is so Ron DeSantis basically was like, oh, maybe I'll run for office. And then he, they asked him if he's going to run. And he goes, yeah, maybe I might. I might not. And Trump goes, wrong answer, right? Yeah. And he the goes, funny. I will ruin you. Well, yeah, because he, Trump still does have his Twitter. So he releases all the press releases. And so it's. The truth, it's no, so they're truths. They're coming. They're the truth social. But all, he still releases the press releases. Yeah, yeah that too. Yeah. And a lot of the press releases are sort of like. Uh, diary entries. It's very like Ron DeSantis, who's dear diary, Ron DeSantis, <laughs> who's actually kind of a loser. Yeah. <laughs> and you're like, nobody even thinks that. Like, even people on the left are like worried about him winning because they're like, he objectively uh, did so many good things. The left like, don't want DeSantis. They're, well, they're just, wor- they're reasonably worried about him. Like, they probably, sure. like, the left r- realistically wants Trump to run. Of course over him. they do. They they go, love they, that. They're like, we'll beat Trump. I know. I think they're like, we're not going to beat this. Anymore. And everyone said, and we even talked about this with Dave a bit. It's like the thing about uh, with Trump is the reason you don't want to run against him is you get that one nickname that sticks, right? Yeah. 
And when Trump came out with a nickname for Ron DeSantis, he called him De Sanctimonious. And it's like, did you fire your nickname, guy? <laughs> it felt like his juices weren't there. Yeah. I mean, I I watched think- <laughs> I watched his announcement speech and just in general. I watched that and then I watched the 2015 announcement and you're like, it's, it's I mean, he's the sauce wasn't there. The sauce is gone. It's not gone, but it's not. It's it's very watered down sauce. You got to wait till he gets in those debates, though. That's when he shines. Uh, but even maybe, the last Biden debates, he was sort of mean instead of funny. And that's remember. Why and that's why. And yeah, that's why yeah. he lost. And like, you know, they say that thing where being the president just like ages you so much. I think being a public figure, fighting with everyone all day, even like why Jordan Peterson's get a bit grumpy. It's hard not to get grumpy when you're arguing but it just, with people all day it long. It really speeds up the aging process. Well, that for sure. Yeah. yeah, he seems like he obviously he is older than he was seven years ago. But I don't know. He just seems much. And it's kind of like, you know, when you're running and then you stop running and then you start again, it's hard. You know what I mean? You're better off to just keep running. I mean, he's also, yeah. And he's also kind of like Gallagher a bit. And then like, he's just like, he had this bit. It was great. But like, you can't just keep smashing watermelons. <laughs> That's what is, he's just like I'm just gonna keep smashing watermelons. You're saying yeah. Trump's the Gallagher of politics? Kind of. I think he is. Yeah. <laughs> he needs a new frame. Like, what happens? It you was try the to newest expand. novelist best thing, and then now you're just like, wait, you're, <laughs> sure. you're still smashing watermelons? Well, then you come out and you're like, what about a pineapple? And everyone's <laughs> like, it feels like it's the same. Deal. Yeah. It seems like he goes, what if I use a sledgehammer instead of a mallet? And he goes, still kind of the kind, same. Yeah, it kind of feels like we're just seeing the same thing again. <laughs> Maybe he gets his brother to run in front of him. You know? Yeah. But to me, it felt like when he came up with. Ron to Sanctimonious. It was like everyone was, it seemed like one of those things. He goes, the nickname's coming. Who wins the nickname? Oh, when the one's that nickname. I mean, comes literally, out. like Jill Biden calls Joe Biden Sleepy Joe. Like, that's how good <laughs> Sleepy Joe was. <laughs> the nicknames were huge. Like, the nicknames were so big that, like, everybody's like, yeah, that's just a good nickname. Teary eyed Danny. Yeah, yeah teary eyed Danny. Sleepy but Joe. I think what happened is, you know, he was like, he's going so rogue because he can't trust anyone. He can't even trust the nickname team because I feel like he had a team of, like, people that were <laughs> yeah, yeah. working overnight and they come out there. They go, we've got it. Crooked Hillary. And everyone goes, oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> That's How the fuck do you do it? Or do you think that he's been trying to get the nickname guy back where he goes and the nickname guy's in the cabin? Yeah. The nickname yeah, guy's just, goes, you know, roasting beans on the fire. You know, I don't do that anymore. <laughs> Ron Sanders is running. We need a nickname. You're the only man for the job. He goes, I stopped making nicknames a long time ago. Oh, fuck, I'll have to do it myself. Ron Sanctimonious. <laughs> I stopped making nicknames a long time ago. I hung up my nickname pad. The nicknames don't even really stick to him, actually. He's he's almost like a Teflon Ron. Ron DeSantis. Yeah, because well, he had Death, Death Santis, but then that just doesn't make any sense. Well, Death Santis didn't make it. That was but, stupid. But even yeah. the people on the left stopped calling him that after like kind they, of well, they've, all the stats settled. And none then of go, their nicknames stick. Like no. with Drumpf, come on. Drumpf. Drumpf is pretty good. <laughs> Well, I decided to throw my hat in the ring and decided to come up with some nicknames. Okay. I'll see if I we... got some too. Okay, okay. So instead I of. I we might have one that's the same, if I guess. Uh, you think so? <laughs> Possibly. Okay. Instead of uh, Ron De Sanctimonious, how about uh, he calls him Ron De Sanchez and it's like a dirty Sanchez? <laughs> okay. So um, he's calling him a gay. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's gay. saying like another man gave him like a dirty Sanchez. Sure, okay, that's a little, a lot, uh, of, lot of explanation. You're saying I won't get on the, okay. okay uh, what about Rhonda can't hit? Is that what you're going to go with? No, I'll say uh, Rhonda not going to be the president anymore. I don't think that one's going to stick either. No. It's a hard game. What about uh, Rhonda Santa Claus is not coming to town? Okay, why is that? Because it's just, I don't know, it's not, Santa Claus is not coming to town. How about Ron DePractice Santeria? Because he's calling him like a hippie <laughs> compared to him. Okay, what about this? Ron Sam Bankman Freed. <laughs> oh, now we're really talking. Now we're talking. Ron, uh, know what actually he would say? This is what was, I was honestly going with him. I might go, Ron De Consensus. Yeah. Because he's saying like he doesn't have any political opinions. Everything is just the 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 Republican consensus. Like yeah. he calls him like a establishment, establishment guy. Establishment guy, yeah. That's why you call him like Ron De Establishment. Ron, Ron De yeah. Consensus. I mean, I mean, it's tough. It's, it's a tough, tough game. It's a tough game. We need to get that guy back. If he so. called him Gone DeSantis, like, you know that's what I mean? Pretty, that's not bad. Gone what about DeSantis. Gone DeSantis? Or just Ron Oh, I've got a good one. Okay. You call him Pawn DeSantis, and you say he's like a pawn for the oh, establishment. That's, oh, that's a good one. You know what I mean? Because he doesn't really change the first names. He's always going after the last name. With DeSantis, I think he, you might have to get That the might first be name. the big switcheroonie to get out of the gallery. And that's what thing, he's missing. That's what, <laughs> is you keep focusing on the last name. <laughs> right? You need to focus on the first name. Pawn DeSantis yeah. would probably hit, and then everyone might start thinking about it and be like, yeah, he kind of does just... Has he ever had, like, a individual idea that was his? Like, kind of something like that. Yeah. Or you do the Sleepy Joe thing where you just add, a, you know, some sort of 
just something at the beginning. Sleepy, yeah, we're like fucking retard Ron. <laughs> Imagine he's, he he does. He's just got and my uh, adversary retard Ron, very low IQ. <laughs> retard Ron might hit. <laughs> Like copying Ron or something like yeah, that. Because he says he's like, he basically excusing him of just copying. Or like, you know, Ron, uh, rep- like uh, Trump light Ron. You know what I mean? Like he's calling him like a light version of something like that. <laughs> yeah. But you can see why it's a hard game. A I'm one. sure Trump lost a lot of sleep over that. But he had to come. He wasn't expecting to have to come up with it so quick, I think. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. I don't think, I don't think he's going to win. That's my early, early take. Run the bitch. <laughs> Run the bitch. Run, you fucking loser. Loser, Ron. Run the fucking loser. Yeah, he doesn't have a lot of good ones. Ron Dutch, Ron, potentially. Ron Dutch. Ron Dutch. Like you're uh, saying he's dumb because yeah, he's, he's dumb. like a type of guy that wears yeah, a Ron, Ron Dutch, Dutch hat. It's <laughs> actually good merch for... Uh... But then the Ron DeSantis pulls the... Turns the tables and he starts printing this merch and then everybody's loving the Ron Dutch. Ron thing. Dutch, I know it's hard. He's in the rock in a hard place, dude. It's a tough one for Trump. Trump has to come up with some new tricks. What don't people like Ron DeSantis about that are Republicans? That Republicans don't like disloyal Ron. That's what yeah, maybe yeah, yeah. you should call him. Like that's I think. Probably, but disloyal to who? Just Trump? to him? <laughs> <laughs> that's like it's just to Trump. <laughs> I don't know. I think Republicans generally. What's like a like better him. name for like disloyal, like shady, like a uh, like disloyal. You know, like he goes to the highest seller. Traitor, traitor is Ron. Traitor is Ron. Traitor Ron. Traitor, traitor Ron's pretty good. <laughs> Too bad. Yeah, Ron the traitor. If he called, if he called uh, Joe Biden, uh, Traitor Joe, that would have been a good one. Yeah. If he was traitor like did Joe. something that was a traitor. Like, like maybe the Ukraine stuff. Oh, well, it's a hard, it's a hard game. I'm telling you. So I, I think he needs to hire the nickname people back yeah. again. He should just literally go to like the comedy cellar and just like be like, hey, you think a lot of people in the cellar is going to take that Trump gig? <laughs> It'll be under the table. Under the be. table. I mean, go go secretly, low key, find like five comics. I'll give you five thousand dollars to come up with thirty nicknames. Yeah. That would be huge though if you got that gig and you're just like, what are you, what are you working on? And be like, yeah, I've got a day to come up with 1,500 <laughs> nicknames for Ron, Ron DeSantis. DeSantis. Well, I don't think we're getting the gig after this. Nah, we lost it. He might have. Had, he was perked at Ron Dutch though. He goes, I'm listening. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I'm listening. What about Mo Ron? <laughs> See, you, Mo is that, Ron is that a thing that he's a stupid though? No. But is Joe? I guess Joe Biden is sleepy. And Ron John is crooked. A lot of mine are clothing name roles. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, we'll circle back. Decant hit is the only thing I could decant, think of. Decant hit. He goes a lot about how he it was easier for him because it was Florida. You know what I mean? Yeah. So oh, I know. Well, yeah, something he goes, on oh, Easy Street. Sunny. It's so easy to be the. So maybe like Easy. But like street he still Ron. legitimately handled all that stuff the best. Maybe Easy Street. Run or warm something. like Newsom is. It's warm in fucking California. Newsom didn't get a slam dunk on that. I mean, I guess it depends who you ask, but I'm trying to. <laughs> Ryan's like, I don't even. I got know. I'm listening to what you're I'm saying. I'm not listening to what you're saying. I feel like I'm under another nickname. Con, Ron, Con, 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 Ron, Con, Ron, Ron the Con, Ron the Con, Ron the Con, Ron the Con. Yo, Ron the Con's it. Hey, Ron the Con is it. I feel like wait, that's it. Ron the Con. Yeah, uh, I feel like he would do okay with Ron the Con. But then maybe he's like, it's Con, and then Ron DeSantis goes, Con's conservative, though, so it's, yeah. Yeah, he I goes, am, yes, I am, I am Con, Ron the con. conservative. Yes. Ron the Con. No, it's saying he's a conservationist. And you, yeah, and then you get Trump having to explain it at which point it's ruined. Yeah, I think Ron the Man, con honestly, okay. now that we're going through this, Trump is due so much more credit for the nickname game. He's good at the nicknames, wow. I know. Actually, having Crooked to... Hillary. Because, yeah... It's tough to make those stick, too. I don't think his new nicknames are going to be good. It's going to be like, Small Tits Mallory. Like he's going to be calling them just like stuff <laughs> yeah, like that. Just, yeah. <laughs> Saddle, <laughs> Saddle bags, Kamala. <laughs> A dumb bitch, Kamala. <laughs> she's got really wide nipples on this one. I have a lot of people say she's got the biggest nipples. I don't she's know. Got the, she's got the biggest areolas. The big areolas. I mean, some people like that. I mean, I don't personally like that. If you like that, I guess good. It should be a compliment then. <laughs> I was uh, saying Trump needs to go trans and just be the first. Uh, he goes, I'm the first trans president too, and he goes, I got the best vagina. <laughs> okay, yeah. so uh, before we get into some of the good, the good, good, the good, good. that I have for this for this week, uh, Danny, I want to applaud you for becoming one of the biggest Democratic donors. Thank you. In the history, of I the got world. I got Joe Biden reelected. I didn't know that. 
at the time. Danny is now responsible for th thousands upon thousands. He doesn't want to release the number. Release the returns. Release the numbers. <laughs> Danny doesn't want to release the numbers. What would it take for you to release the numbers of how much you lost in FTX? Nothing. You know, you would not do it. You're taking those numbers to the grave. That's is it because it's an embarrassing amount? Yes. Like you don't want, is it because you don't want people to know what kind of money you were playing with? Or do you not, are you like embarrassed of the figure? Just everything. It's just, it's just such a mess. Does anyone know that number? Have you told one single person yeah. what the number is? Who? My girlfriend. That's the only person that knows. Yeah. yeah, but you told her for functional reasons probably, right? She's like, why don't we go on this vacation? Yeah, I go, hey, uh, Hanukkah's been canceled, <laughs> bitch. You, there's definitely <laughs> utility in telling her. That's how nah, you collect I, some of it back. Yeah, yeah. Nah, unfortunately, no. <laughs> That's how you, I bring up my losses quite a bit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, buddy. Yeah, bringing up those numbers is a good way to buy your, you, you buy your way back out of, out of having to pay for things yeah, here and there. It's like, oh, you're, gonna, you're really uh, supersizing that, huh? I don't know. Did you see how much money I lost on FTX? I don't know FTX? if you saw how much money I lost on <laughs> <in> FTX. <laughs> really? We're going to supersize the whole thing. Not even just the drink, fries and the drink. Okay, okay so Janie's going to do a quick synopsis of the funniest parts. To me, the funniest, funniest. parts. Oh, I mean, it's, it's so f insane. It's uh, I, like, I don't even know where to begin. Well, I would begin with. I mean, I will say shout out. The polygamy out. is the funniest. The polygamy is the funniest. The fact that there's a bunch of dweebs who are like all Adderalled up. They were on these special Adderall patches called MSAM that make you. One, it's like they say one of the warnings is because, you know, they're like all vegans. And then one of the warnings was that you can't eat certain meats because it'll like react oddly and can kill you with these patches. And then also it makes you hypersexualized. So that explains the orgy. So these guys are just running around. Running around. Penises. Just, <laughs> yeah, just fucking every, all of them, the chicks, all they're all fucking. And then it also makes you higher propensity to take on risk and gamble. That was an interesting. That was the one where said. they go, this patch that they're all on is like literally makes you. These guys are just running around, blah, 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 all in. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, but it's even like, like, dude, it's such a fast-moving thing. Like, like I'm just reading the stuff that's coming out today. And so the guy who's like the now the new CEO of FTX was the guy. He's just like was installed uh, once they went bankrupt to be like, hey, can you just clean this up? Get everybody as much money back as they can. And like, but he was the, the guy cleanup who, crew. He was the cleanup guy for Enron. Like he okay. was the guy who Kenneth Lay got the boot and you go, you're the new CEO. A lot of the guys in this thing were all like, if you looked into it, this guy had like 40 scams before. Like the one guy was the poker, the poker guy. Well, that was, yeah, they're like CFO or they're legal something. Yeah, he was in the ultimate bet poker thing. But anyways, this guy is like, the guy who came in, I think his name's like John Jay or something. But like, he's like the guy, if you go bankrupt, to come in and like fix or clean everything up, I guess, and like get to the bottom of things. And he's just like, it's legit 10 college buddies somehow like back their way into this multi-billion dollar company and they didn't really know what they were doing like like they're, they're literally like they don't have really like accounting there's like no oversight like there's literally billions of dollars and just like ious it's like dumb and dumber like with the briefcase it's just like well, you're like, dumbest i'm the yeah, yeah i'm on, on dumb, one dumber those, and dumbest i'm on one of those fucking ious i guess but uh <laughs> it was crazy man they're like they just have and he's still like Sam Bankman Free still tweeting like he's he can turn this around. Oh and my like, god! And then like FTX came out today or yesterday, and they're like, just to be clear, Sam Bankman Free uh, is not associated with his company anymore. He stepped down entirely uh, on November 11th. They're like, so he keeps tweeting like he can turn this around. You're like, you're not involved in this company anymore. <laughs> you are like a you are soon to be a like defendant in a criminal complaint from the Department of Justice. But you're like, there's no turning this around, dude. Like this is over. That's he's, that's a guy that's still on Adderall though, like walking around. He just he's like a psychopath. But that's him. He just took the Adderall patches, banged one of his ugly wives, yeah, <laughs> and then he's smoking a cigarette, and he's like, "There's still time," and you're just like, you're in a, like a psychosis almost. You know kind what I mean? Of. Yeah, that's I've had times where I took too many drugs, and you kind of think you have stuff to do that you don't, and you're like, I can do this, and everyone's like, you know, I remember I was telling you, but I have a, I, I remember being like, you know what I have to do? I got to, uh, I have to send these emails out, and then you wait for my job, and you wake up, and you're like, what emails? I don't have a job. Like, yeah, it was it all was, this. It was, like, it was Jesse and um, Saved by the Bell. Remember when she was on the, the caffeine pills or whatever and she's like really. i'm so excited and then she breaks down like that i don't, know. People <laughs> I watch don't really remember bell. people watch saved by the bell that was a classic scene um but yeah he's probably just running around still hopped up on adderall well and i mean he's dude it, like the fall his like arc and the fall and the Woo! speed of the fall like Woo! two weeks ago my friend like on november it's 
on November 1st, okay, he was worth $30 billion and owned 90% of like, you know, the the second biggest crypto exchange in the world and was like the darling, you know, he was on all the covers of magazines, this guy's in the next, literally like, boy. like next Mark Zuckerberg, whatever, like, you know, next whatever, next Warren Buffett, all that shit. And then two weeks later, all gone. F- Sam Bankman greed. Yeah. And <laughs> I will say shout out to, because the more I read about it, the more it's just like the dude from Binance, like he played this pretty impressively. Like okay, he tell did me that. this. He did this. Okay. Like this whole thing could have been avoided. What did he do? So, okay. So here's, here's for people who don't know, the, the short of it is so Coindesk, which is like this cryptocurrency like website or whatever blog, they come out with this. They go like, we've had some, someone provided us with Alameda. So there's FTX, there's Alameda, Alameda Research. Alameda Research was Sam Bankman Fried's hedge fund, and then FTX was the crypto exchange. He owned both basically, but he said that they were separate entities yeah, and so they were I know not involved. That, but that was a yeah. lie. Okay. That turned out to be a lie. But, anyways, so they come out and Coindesk is like Alameda Research. Um, we got to look at their, their balance sheet or whatever, and they're like, they have you know, $9 billion of liability of assets or like $9 billion of, of, you know, $8 billion of liabilities, $9 billion of assets. So they're not bankrupt or anything, but those assets are in these like super illiquid, their own tokens that they made up. We have $9 billion in Ryan coin. Literally like FT, it was FTT serum and maps or something was the other one. Right. But so they have these coins, but you're like, if people don't trust FTX as an entity, those are zeros. They're all zeros, right? Instantly. They're like, and so anyways, so then um, Sam Bankman freed, uh, like so uh, CZ from Binance is very against like overregulation for crypto, right? Sam Bankman freed has been spending all his money trying to get it super regulated Why? All, all in Washington because he wants to basically get- Regulate out the competition. Yes. He wants to get, he wanted to get to write the rules and CZ was the first investor in FTX. Right, so they used to be friends, and CZ invested in FTX. So CZ held like five hundred and fifty million dollars of this FTT token. So then he finds out about this. He's also like not happy about the shit that <laughs> Sam Bankman Fried's doing in America. And then he goes and he tweets. He goes, I, like after learning about this stuff, um, I'm basically going to market sell my uh, five hundred fifty million dollars in FTT. Like I'm just going to dump it. I, I want to be out of the FTX game because this is Gone. concerning, right? And then Caroline, the fucking the chick, she comes out and she's like, hey, like no need to screw over like the FTT holders or whatever because knowing that like just that amount of selling would tank the price. She's like, we'll just go OTC, which is like over the counter off the exchange. We'll just buy all your FTT from you for $22 each. And he's like, that's sketchy. What no, he to? goes, he goes, no. Oh. He's like, I just rather do this. Okay. Knowing... That, that it's gonna kill this them. is going to destroy the whole thing. Oh. He could have just taken the, like, literally, he could have been like, okay, I'll take the $22. Got way more than he ended up getting, I'm sure. But he knew that once he, he dumped go- all this, it was going to put knew the, strain he, on the thing. He knew all the, like, connected p- parts. So he goes, once I do this, and the fact that I decline it, once that $22 level breaks, he's like, the whole thing's going to fall apart because then all their collateral that they say is worth $9 billion or $8 billion against their, or yeah, yeah, like all their collateral that they're saying is is worth $9 million is going to go to $2 billion and they're going to be insolvent. And then him doing this caused all these people to start withdrawing their money. So they had like $5 billion of withdrawals in two days Ooh. and they couldn't cover it. And then the whole thing just fell apart. All of it, just like that. But he did it. Like he could have totally not done it and let them keep running their little Ponzi scheme. Uh-huh. But- he was like, he doesn't like, like this and guy. Got then, too- not only that, he fucking goes, um, in the interest of like saving crypto, he's like, I'm going to buy FTX. We've agreed a non binding offer to buy FTX. So then everybody's like, oh, okay, it's not so bad. And then the next day, he's like, we're not doing it. I remember that too. Yeah. He goes, we looked at it and it can't be saved. We're not doing it, which he's right. But I think he's just like, we're just literally just going to find our biggest competitor. And he's like, I can just crush them. Yeah, and then uh, well, we with have a, a tweet. Ch- we have a chat group with Balaji, and he was sort of saying because all these other people are sort of saying what Sam Bankman Fried was. Oh, the government needs to get in and regulate. And he was like, "No, you don't." 
It's kind of like when people complain when the government banks bails at the banks. He goes, yeah, this is what it looks like when they didn't. Yes. Which is better. Yeah, there's a lot of pain, but it's like that's part of the, the game For sure. of deregulation. And also he goes, what he did was illegal. You don't need new laws. He already did what he did yeah, is illegal did is with illegal. the uh, laws now. Yeah, and again, it's like he's, yeah. It's like saying when someone kills someone. It's like when someone shoots someone with, like, shoots someone and they're like, we need stricter murder laws. And you're like, there already was, I guess. Yeah, and not only that, like, they're all the government, like, tons of people in the government have been calling for regulation in crypto because at the end of the day like there is no insurance on your money like it's not a bank and again banks it's rare but banks can go under but now people and will you know are, like you got to have your money in different exchanges you can't just have all your money in no, one place no you, you don't have any protection in any exchange no but i'm saying for example yeah, yeah. if you had your money in eight exchanges i mean technically you're only would just be a risk. even for like just regular non crypto people like you're only covered for $250,000 by your regular bank so you're like, if, like I mean, theoretically, if you have more than two hundred fifty thousand dollars, they should be in different, all in different accounts. Okay. Because technically, if one of those banks goes under, then you're not covered. So there you go. Like you're covered up to two hundred fifty thousand, but if you have more than that, then all of that extra money's also gone. Tom Brady and Giselle allegedly broke up over losing a lot of their crypto, yeah. which is probably not true. But no. <laughs> well, they didn't lose crypto. They were apparently, and that's another shady thing is they were tricking all these people into like investing in FTX. Like apparently, Tom Brady and Giselle. They were like, we'll give you a deal on equity if you want to buy right now. And they're, they're, everybody was like, we'd be stupid not to. Uh -huh. So then all these people, man, it's crazy. And all the people that work there were getting paid in fucking fake tokens too. Yeah, they were getting paid in that. They were getting paid in equity. But it, like it was- That's like if we hired everyone and paid them in like boys cast tokens, they were basically, we knew that they were worth zero because we were diluting them every day. Yeah. But I mean, at least like there was some like value in them two weeks ago. But it's just, they cause it. I mean, he just, CZ caused a run on the bank. He just knew how to do it and he caused a run on the bank. And and then because they were like, just didn't. And then the text message got leaked of uh, this guy's buddy was basically, uh, had text with him. He's like, yeah, you know how it is. We got to pretend we're this doing reporter. all the, we have to pretend we're doing all the woke shit. Yeah. Like, that's what it is. Like, that's the game. It sucks that it's like that. And in but that thing, he still was saying that he's like, I think I. You guys like I have two weeks to turn it around, and that's what FTX was like. He's not in the company anymore. Like in that in that text exchange, it was with this reporter from Vox or something that he knew, and she's like, he's saying to her, he's like, yeah, we have two weeks to. I still have two weeks where I can maybe like save my life, kind of thing. And then FTX is like, he's not involved. And yeah, and also um, <clears throat> with uh, the New York Times, apparently did like a big puff, and Washington puff piece and Washington Post because. Why, why did they do a puff? Why did the New York Times do a puff piece on him? I mean, that's what a lot of people would like to know. And they're not exactly the paper of record, I guess. I don't I, I don't know. <laughs> they're like, probably they're friends with him. Maybe donations. He's, he's a liberal. Okay. Uh, maybe. I, I don't know. But like, they didn't mention fraud. They didn't mention the fact that like, you know, literally, I, I, it must be millions of people are, are affected by this. And a lot of the people in the Democratic Party were just like, we just lost like so much money that was oh, coming for sure. in. Although I will say, so Martin Shkreli, who was on the show, he called in a low value mail on Tuesday. And he said, he's like, I know how this lobbying stuff works. He's like, man, they don't care if you show up to Washington with $40 million one year. He's like, you got to be in there for 20 years to be able to really do shit. He's like, to just be able to show up with like a chunk of money and think you're just going to get laws passed. You got to like be that. in the game for a he's while. He's like, you got to be in the game for a while because they, they need to know that you're like, reliable in that sense where like you can come back every year kind of thing so he, he, he I, and again i don't know i don't know anything about the lobbying game that's just what martin said but he was like yeah they uh he's like i, I don't think that did much interesting yeah okay well yeah, debacle, debacle moving of, on debacle of the decade we're gonna take a quick break because we got to tell you about athletic greens that me and danny both use it's one of the biggest things that i've added to my life that i continually do and now it's been over a year probably, and I've still been hard oh on the Athletic Greens. Probably one of the best tasting supplement mixes that I've ever had in my life. Put some pep in your step. I use it as pregame before I run as well. So if you didn't have the time, you want better gut health, more energy, optimized immune system, hated taking pills, vitamins. If you want a supplement that actually tastes great and you want to see what the hype's about, get in on Athletic Greens. We got a mild tropical taste, which is one of my favorites. One scoop a day, Athletic Greens in the water, shake her up. You got 75 high quality vitamins, minerals, whole food source superfoods, probiotics, adaptogens to start your day right. And the special blend of ingredients supports your gut health, your nervous system, your immune system, your energy recovery, focus, and aging. It supports better sleep, quality, 
and recovery. Can never stop getting good sleep. It's cheaper than getting all the different supplements yourself. Athletic Greens was created by the founder who experienced a ton of gut health issues, and he had a complicated supplement routine that cost him $100 a day, and that's why he created Athletic Greens. It's now time to reclaim your gut health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition, especially heading into the flu and cold season. It is just one scoop and a cup of water every day. That's it. No need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health. To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs for your first purchase. All you got to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash boyscast. One more time, that's athleticgreens.com slash boyscast to take ownership of your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. Going to take another quick break here to tell you that for early Black Friday sale, for the next three days... 15% off all fellas, fellas merch when you go to RyanLongStore.com. Tons of different designs. You already know what it is. People have been buying it on tour. It's been going like hotcakes. I I don't even have enough at the end of the last show on all these tours. I didn't. I've got to keep sending more because it's going like hot cake. Ryan, you can't give them a deal like that. It's fifteen percent. No, cheap. Ryan, you can't do it. It's going to hurt the shipping. The margins. The margins. The margins, Ryan. The overheads. <laughs> 15% off Black Friday sale, ryanlongstore.com. <laughs> Women <laughs> have been figuring out that uh, that you that uh, you only get uh, privilege if you're hot. Oh. Uh-huh. So hot a cur- privilege. Curvy woman speaks out after they're denied entry into Hollywood nightclub. It was so dehumanizing. Oh. And the whole story was just like Basically, what every guy yeah, I go, they at literally, a club yeah, I go, they, always. Yeah, they treated us like a guy. <laughs> you go, oh, bomber. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because you literally go, yeah, there's a place that has a business model that the more hot girls that are there, the more people that will want to come there and give them money. Yeah. And then they were like, it was getting a little chubby in the line. <laughs> And they go there's all these places they go but where girls drink for free you know what i mean of course get and in you know for what? free and the uggos get to be on that you know what i mean yeah they get to be it's like if one thing they go men get to you know be at this thing for free because we need some strong men here for security and we give you free food and drinks and then like you know weasley dudes show up yeah. and be like here for the free food and drinks you go all right, all right. i guess that's Just the rule you know what i mean sure keep people out and again it's all the guy who shows up to pizza for the pizza <laughs> to help you move but has no yeah. fucking pipes on yeah, him he's not helping anything he's just he's just delegating so yeah not hot women have been turned into men and she goes these buxom beauties so they, buxom <laughs> they, well the writer of this disagrees with the bouncer but it's funny also they go back and forth between being like they were turned down because they're not hot enough and then being like also they're beautiful yeah and they'd be like well what was the issue then and i guess they turned them down for something else it's like well, they they didn't see their beauty. Hey, well, but they're not saying like no one should care. Like <laughs> it's switched from before when people would be like, "Well, it shouldn't matter how hot a girl is." Now they're like, "Well, it should matter." But these, ever, they're all hot. Yeah, it's like how hot is hot enough? And <laughs> these bucks and beauties are blowing the whistle, and, and also eating the whistle. <laughs> they're blowing the. Whistle. Hey, can I get that whistle back? <laughs> what whistle? <laughs> Well, but it does like a little, yeah, 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 yeah. you burp a little with yeah. <laughs> they're blowing the lizzle on body shaving bouncer yeah being a bouncer and i'm not even on the side of bouncers but if you think if you think like a fucking uh a, a, like a chick that isn't hot that's honestly like kind of dressed like a club chick not getting into the problem try being like a 90 year old woman try being like any and dude that isn't super rich of course. I mean, this body, the, imagine, it's so funny telling like a bouncer he's hot shaming. <laughs> You're like, this bouncer is shaming women by they're not hot. It's like, yeah, that's the mandate. Yeah, I, yeah, literally, I don't know. Here. Like, they're, I've, you know, we, like, shitty clubs like that I've been nine to because like I show up and they're like yeah you're not wearing like the right shirt and yeah like, you don't have the right shoes on and I'm like oh I'm sorry I'm getting shoe shamed <laughs> but really yeah the, you I mean whenever it happens I'm just like yes. yeah yeah you're happy right? <laughs> I'm always at like it's ah. something I barely want to go to I show up and I go oh they won't let me in I sir you're know, wearing so. a potato sack <laughs> <laughs> oh you're gonna sh- sack shame me huh <laughs> I'm calling the New York Post plus size models uh, these two uh, these two plus size models were uh, mad at the highlight room for denying them access into the club due to the size of their bodies. We're feeling absolutely sick to our stomachs, which could be 
Also, just, <laughs> just maybe it's rich. We are denied access and our stomachs are rumbling. <laughs> 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 what do you do you think they actually do you think they did like a, the same thing guys do after like a night like that they have to just go to Wendy's and yeah like, just sit at a table I mean, with that's a the thing is like there's so, I'm sure there's many places that would happily allow them in <laughs> yes obviously they're trying to go to some hot they club to the, some yeah. hot people club yeah that's the breaks I mean if I ever if there's ever someone goes like hey we're going to this like super exclusive club in my mind I'm like Probably not get again, but we'll see. No, the, I I would I only go to those places these days when I have a plug. Totally, but even when there's a plug, me too. But I'm like, even still, I'm just like, I in my mind, I'm like, it just I expect them to just be like, yeah, you can't come in. Yeah, everyone in, but 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 but, but yeah. we don't make doors that big, pal. Yeah, yeah, you, go, uh, you don't have a freight elevator. Yeah, so it turns out that they're they're flabbergasted to find out that hot girls get a little bit of better treatment. Crazy. We're feeling sick to our stomachs. This Sports Illustrated swimsuit model said. That's One the of these is a Sports <laughs> Illustrated swimsuit model? So the guy was, I think the guy might not have been happy when the person said, I'm fucking, I got some swimsuit models coming through. And then <laughs> he goes, where? It's like, I only see a defensive line. <laughs> swimsuit. Are they behind the, are they behind the linebackers? Yeah, or? Where, where is, are they? They got that's the, one of those things these days. You got to ask for pics because someone comes in, it's like, yo, I'm rolling through. I got four swimsuit I mean, models. Like, yeah, models. of course, bring the swimsuit models through. That's cool. And you go, he shows up and he goes, okay, here are the swimsuit models. He goes, you're fucking serious right now. I mean, I will say that I've 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 infiltrated my girlfriend's brain enough to the point where she could online shop so much and she'll all the time be like, look what are models now. Like, I even got my girlfriend being you like, got her. she's like, anybody's a, anybody's a model. Well, it's only the girls too. You always of see course, the thing where it's the swimsuit models with the girls. They look like Yokozuma with a fucking <laughs> wig on. <laughs> Earthquake and typhoon. Yeah, and then you look at the guy models, and they're still jacked. Yeah, they, they look like me. Jacked. Yeah, jack dude. Jack dudes. I know. <laughs> there is two models. They actually do have jack dudes. Or I feel like a lot of places model with dudes that look like me, like skinny tattooed guys. No, they, well, there's. I've been doing a joke about it, but there's like this J Crew ad right now, and there's just like a guy in it who looks looks like me with his fucking <laughs> gut, and I'm like, what the fuck is going on? Like even me, I'm like, what are we doing? Guy with a gut. Yeah, like legit. Like this is like, dude. He's just like. Yo, I got some models coming through. I'd be so pissed if I was the bouncer. Yeah. Yo, yo, we're partying with models tonight. Like that could literally <laughs> swimsuit mean swimsuit models nonetheless. That could mean right now anything. <laughs> You're like, you don't know they're assigned sex at birth, like nothing. You know nothing about like that tells you zero. Hey, I'm here with the models. Yeah, I'm out front. I don't see you guys. No, we're at the loading dock. <laughs> Oh my god! I got invited to the highlight room for my friend's birthday. Um, a curvy influencer, but yes, obviously it is what it is. the The club industry is a schemy industry, of course. Um, but you go, th just call a spade a spade that it's easier for hot girls. I mean, also, and what they're saying is like, well, it just should be easier for all girls, but not men. Yeah, and also they're like, look, but we're successful models, and you're like, yes. Sure, in this realm of something. But you go, should other, like, is their argument that, like, obviously you're supposed to let hot girls in. It's just, like, crazy that we're not being yeah. treated as one. <laughs> like, do you know what I mean? If these two girls, this is how, like, girls are so crabs in a bucket. Because if, if these two girls did get in, and then two other, like, fatter girls didn't get in these girls would not they would not yeah say like shit. not like fat not models like, exactly you know, like oh you guys are like look the same but you're like they're not models yeah they'd be like yeah why should they be in here with but us? what about all of the Beautiful million girls people. that have been you know it's so what a coincidence you're blowing the whistle on it the day it happened to you yeah <laughs> yeah the one all the other times that this girl got into clubs she wasn't blowing any whistles no no fucking well you know what you're finding out if you want to get into the club you got a name you got to blow whistle oh. as in james whistle the bouncer <laughs> of the club i also think for a, like any sort of trendy nightclub like really is like the get woke go broke thing probably applies to them super like if you want oh you want to be like God. some trendy nightclub and doing all the bullshit oh. you're like that's it for you. you you cannot be the trendy nightclub where you got the girl in the cage on the thing with the one leg <laughs> <laughs> yeah like it's just not happening yeah, you have the girls with like you know acne in one leg. Be the, be the progressive, Just like, and, like yeah. Hot. You're like we're the progressive club, and you're like yeah. Nobody wants to hang up. Nobody there. is going to the club in you know West Hollywood because they no. they're not, you know because they don't see hotness. No, I mean she was on Sports Illustrated. 
Well, she should be able to get in on some fame stuff. You know what I mean? I'm gonna. Can we petition? You should be able to be like, hey, that's me on the cover, and the bouncer should just say yes. But it's like you have to be like, she has to do the but same probably, thing guys have to do. It's like, yeah, yeah guys can't get in f- for being hot, but they can get in for being famous for sure. Like some guy shows up, and they're like, no, you can't come in. And he goes, I-, I play in the NBA, and they go, oh, oh, sorry, sorry, I didn't realize. She has to, but he get, has to say it. She she doesn't want to have to say, oh, by the way, I'm famous. She wants to be able to just get in on being a hot chick. Yeah, good luck on that. Well, it didn't work out. I mean, now that she's made her whole stink, it'd be hard. I mean, part of me like s- sympathizes with her because the whole world, or not the whole world, but like her bubble is telling her that you're like, you're the gorgeous model. Yes. Like that's all she's being told kind of in her world is like, you're gorgeous. You're well, still- I also Sports Illustrated swimsuits her. calling you up and being like, I mean, I don't sympathize with her for No, but I'm saying I also club. sympathize her because you're, well, with that part where you're just like, yeah, that's all of us. But your point is, yeah, I see what you're saying that like, she in her mind she is like no that's not true though because she knows she was on there to like make a statement of how big I don't are. know how much they think that you I don't think know. that she doesn't think that no she's like I've always been hot they're finally recognizing me for my hotness I have no idea you're right there is a certain type of narcissism that comes with being like 40 pounds overweight and deciding to be a model yeah like if you right now were like I was I'm gonna be a model and I was like really and you go what's weird about that you would be like yeah, I mean, like, yeah, that is kind of a... Uh, yeah, it's crazy, but... You're I mean, like, I'm going to be, like, an underwear model. But again, I'm like, I've never been closer in my life to being an underwear model. Well, you being a model for normal clothes is actually pretty normal, because you are, you do look like a, just a guy, you know what I mean? Sure. In you the last, playing, like, a no, guy is fine. Yeah, but up until five years ago, the only thing I could have been a model for was either, like, a big and tall store or Depends. Yeah, and I get to be a model for, like, skateboard trucks. Yeah, or, like, <laughs> you had your Mark Works warehouse thing. Right? Oh, that was... I could have been, like... That a, was a traditional modeling Yeah, gig. that was, I know. I could maybe... I could have been, like, a Canadian tire. Of course, right? Yeah, but not, Just like... like a dad. Yeah, but not, like, swimsuits. And then Speedos. No. <laughs> not yet. I'm gonna put... I'm gonna fucking put the screws to Sports Illustrated. At this point, Jordan Peterson would not be impressed with this fucking thing. If Jordan Peterson... Not Peter- hot! Jordan Peterson's the bouncer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that would be amazing, Jordan Peterson. Oh, that's a good one, Jordan Peterson. I did a Jordan Peterson sketch with Jeremiah. Oh, Jordan Peterson. He's coming out Monday. Oh, that's great. Jordan Peterson fucking bouncer would be amazing. <laughs> Jordan Peterson's the bouncer at the club. Oh, I'm getting a lot of that. Is- well, we don't have to do structural repairs to the dance floor. Ah, <laughs> uh, no. How about No. <laughs> We don't have an army to bring the hors d'oeuvres in. (laughs) (coughs) Oh, uh, that would be a good one right there. I'll take your friend. (laughs) No, he goes, he goes, we only have room for two people. He goes, there's only two of us. He goes, could have fooled me. (laughs) You could have fooled old JP. <laughs> oh, that's funny. And that <laughs> Jordan Peterson being the bouncer is fucking <laughs> pretty good trendy stuff. Trendy club. <laughs> Not hot. Not hot. We're full. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, tough for them though. I feel bad. At one point it was extremely apparent what was going on. Yeah, the bouncers aren't they don't fucking fuck around with that sort of shit. They're assholes. No. Yeah, they're assholes. I mean they're literally like yeah, they're, they're getting bribed all night, especially if this is They're like, the worst people in the world, and they, these girls are kind of like, these bouncers are like assholes, and it was like, they've never been like that before to me. Yeah, yeah I yeah, mean, generally bouncers are assholes at any sort of nightclub, but then you put them at the trendiest nightclub in Los Angeles. Mm-hmm. You're like, yeah, you're going to be- They're on a power trip. Of course. They're, they're getting fun. fucking blown to, for, you know, to get it. public just, access. Uh, oh. Yeah, okay. girls are smashing bouncers to get in places. Of course. Of course. I've never even like wanted to grease a bouncer too because I've like, I've greased bouncers. I always just feel like I'm gonna be like, here's twenty, they go, Thanks, man. I know. Can it I is true. And they go, no. I have greased them though. You've never greased them? <laughs> no. Yeah, I'm pretty pretty big greaser. No, I never greased. I've never greased like crazy amounts. I've greased like twenty, forty tops. Yeah. I think maybe once for something. But it was like something where you're like clearly there it was like maybe a restaurant or something. You've greased the bouncer at like a donut shop to get to the front of the line. <laughs> no, no, I go, yo, uh I go to the at the Dunkin' Donuts. I slip in my twenty, go, What time do they throw out the uh still donuts? <laughs> Listen, they go, they go, look, uh, that bag of crullers goes yeah. missing. <laughs> 845, I'll meet you at the dumpster. <laughs> <That's> a, <laughs> you're bribing the Dunkin' Donuts. You just bring, you go, 20 bucks, and you go, no, you wrap the $20 in a bag, you go, fill her up. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm robbing a Dunkin'. 
pop that at the back. Yeah, that's so funny though. Getting the the hot tip on when they're throwing out <laughs> throwing out the donuts, the day olds. <laughs> when the day olds are going, <laughs> do like a yeah a fancy restaurant. Oh shit. <laughs> uh, that's good stuff. The fact that the full figure foxes. <laughs> I love newspapers when they do this sort of. Oh, and they have New York like, Post is the best. New York Post because they have like every time they describe them, it's a new way. <laughs> <laughs> so far they've called them <laughs> the full figure foxes and then the voluptuous vixens and then the... <laughs> yeah, they call them voluptuous vixens did they call them that oh maybe not oh, they well. call them stuff the buxom beauties buxom beauties <laughs> if they didn't get to voluptuous or voluptuous vixens well i'm sure they did full, the full figured full figured foxes <laughs> i like full figured foxes it's just funny too because like the, com- the company had to issue a statement and they're like our company does not tolerate discrimination of any kind you're like yes you do this oh yeah business model okay then why can't a- i come in yeah why can't i come in with a fucking pair of jordans on yeah or like you guys probably have strictly like no gang attire which everybody knows what that means you also have like no guys that aren't rich attire yeah exactly like a group of fucking just random dudes that look like they just finished at the the mine yeah like the business model of places like these is heavily discriminating against people. it's of course <laughs> and you get it to some degree but it's like listen baby baby <laughs> we're not trying to have our this is a club not sea world <laughs> <laughs> it's not the zoo you pigs it's not a petting zoo This is this is a Los Angeles, this is a West Hollywood club, not a Disney World food court. <laughs> I fucking wish I could do it. Yeah, my voice is I'm kind of sick. My voice is a little rusty. Uh, you had your one week where you were good at it. Now you yeah, got lost fine. it. I lost it. Me and Danny talked about doing the hot or not sketch. We didn't have the fucking <laughs> the, you couldn't do the impression. I could do the sketch. Things. No, we could do a sketch. <laughs> I said I couldn't do that. Well, we were trying to especially do, if I'm not you were trying the, to do the voice the next week, and you were struggling. No, if I'm not on the well, if you put me on the spot, but if I have takes, I can do it for sure. I feel like I'm you're queued up right now for some fucking Peterson. <laughs> no, I have my voice. It keeps cracking. <laughs> my voice keeps cracking. Okay. Not hot, <laughs> but it keeps cracking. Yeah, you don't I'm have it right now. <laughs> I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. We can do it. Oh, I think the. <laughs> oh, I'm I'm sorry. I think the. Uh, <laughs> The Mammoth Museum is down the street. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, we don't have gravy on tap. <laughs> Keep moving. Oh, Even though we know that's probably hard for you. <laughs> uh, Back it up, ladies. Honestly, beep, beep, <laughs> beep. <laughs> He's doing the sound effects and everything. <laughs> beep. Yeah. I don't honestly. I don't know why. I don't. Not only do I not feel bad for them, I actually feel good about the whole thing. Yes, girls getting fucking the same thing that guys get every yeah, time. Like, well, it's just the taste of their medicine. Yeah. Well, uh, speaking of which, uh, the hot girl topic. There was a study that is like hilarious. Yeah. But it's obvious. One of those studies where not a big surprise, but they did a study. Um, and this is now this is news. They did this. Um, study of like all the classrooms uh, during COVID and all that sort of stuff. And it turns out that uh, attractive women students got worse grades when they went remote. Oh, and it's like, so as it turns out, being a hot girl, uh, people end up doing nicer things for yeah, you. Yeah, and you do, and teachers just like you more. Yeah, if you're like a TA grading a college kid and she's like a dime piece, like you give her a little Seems bit of a higher. A, yeah, they're, yeah, they seem more likable. And, and only on subjects that it can be more subjective. Like it didn't change their marks in like math and stuff sure. like that. But it changed their marks in like English wow. or whatever. Wow, who would have thought? Who would have thought, right? But I gar- I'll tell you who wouldn't have thought, women, if you tell them this. Of course. And the men's marks remained unchanged. Yeah. So the men, based on, if, and they basically got 300 hundred people to rate the girls to say that like that's how they decided how hot they were to try to yeah. get some objective measure or whatever yeah yeah so but basically the guys there was no correlation between how hot they were and how much their marks went down without the you know yeah the without teacher being able to yep. see them yep and <laughs> it was a, it was basically like a blind study right mm-hmm. and then the girls there was like how much their marks uh went down based on not being in class it was strongly correlated <laughs> To how hot they were. That's, that's weird because I read a study that said women have it harder. Yes. In everything. Well, they do if they're not hot. It's like really yeah. all of but this so stuff. Does, but so does a guy. If they're not hot. If a guy is just like some gross goblin. like You can beat that by is, being rich. 
Sure, but you have to get rich by then being smart, <laughs> and it's now like in these subjective things, you're being graded harder. Uh-huh. So you have to be even better than like a, someone who's like equally smart. No, but it said the guys you. weren't getting graded harder for their hotness. For their hot, they're not, but they're not getting. But does that reflect if they're? I would say that guys, or? obviously, there's an advantage to being an attractive male. Like if you, you know, getting women, like yeah. I'm sure popular. Like there's obviously things more confident. But, but I don't think it, it necessarily uh, in acad- in the academic world. Mm. The, well, I mean, girl yeah. girl teachers probably aren't that likely to give like the hot guy a better mark. Yeah, you but know like, I, mean? I mean, I feel like yeah, maybe. And guy teachers definitely aren't giving the hot guy a better mark. If anything, they probably give him a worse mark. Yeah. Maybe. I don't know. Yeah, whatever. Who knows? I don't know. There might be scenarios where it's one way or the other, I'm sure. I wonder, I was <laughs> actually talking about these supermodels that were or, uh, super models. I don't know. But uh, you think just like all their followers, because they're like these big models, it's just all women, right? Like they're like it's not like Kate Upton where Kate Upton's followers are all guys. There's some g- dudes that probably like that shit, but I think the supermodels have male and female followers because I know girls that follow. Of course, all those of people. course, of course, of course. But I'm just saying. To be honest, I don't follow any of those people, and every girl I've ever dated does follow all yeah, those girls. What the the big ones? <laughs> I don't know if they follow the big. ones. But that's what I'm saying. But like the oh, big ones have to get followed for being like activists, almost. You know. But what I'm I mean? saying like the people who follow these plus size models <laughs> are probably other plus size women. I feel or just like women in that into that stuff i would it has to be it and has then, to be right and dudes that are into that like you know what i mean like rappers or whatever they like that type of woman yeah i bet you you look at like the plus size model her instagram is like full with like rappers dming her and shit like that yeah i i, I wonder about that i my guess would be it's just women all just self-affirm self-affirming women in this like it would Body be interesting to find a loop echo chamber. If, if look at like the nor- the supermodel from before and then look at the supermodel I mean, the body look positive at- one and then be like, what's the demographic difference between male For and sure. female? For sure. I guarantee you it's like skewed a lot. You ha- I think you're right. Yeah. Like Kate Upton, it's all dudes being like, oh my God, I'd fucking give a, a, anything to just smell your underwear. And then it's being like, a dude commentator like, on Chicks that are all like, yes. And all that stuff for these. There's this girls. one guy, his name's like prodigy or something like that. But on every page, like from, you know, from like no jumper to every rap yeah, page, yeah. every uh, six buzz, like all those, right? Every time anyone comments about, like, let's say they posted about Drake, he goes, Drake the goat, no cap. Have you ever seen that guy? I know. Oh, yeah. He posts <laughs> he, on Kanye. He posts, he goes, he's like a producer. Kanye the goat, no cap. And he's like, Justin Bieber, the goat, no cap. And yeah. it's the only thing he posts. And it's always the top comment. Yeah. And it's like he's literally making a career over just posting people like the, the goat, the, no the cap. Go, no cap. <laughs> it's like so crazy. I've never not seen him as a top comment on a post about hip hop I mean he's doing something right <laughs> he is doing something right that being said I've never clicked on his page yeah me neither I think I did actually I think he's like made he produced like one song for well, he needs a person. song that's called to goat no cap <laughs> I'm the go- I'm the goat no cap if he no does cat. it there's something really wrong with him <laughs> yeah I'm the goat no cap really really wrong <laughs> but yeah so then the girl, who, uh, person who made this study goes, I'm interested in discrimination generally. So this is why she started the study to find out if there was some discrimination against sure. women. But <laughs> Well, I mean, good on her for not deleting the results. I guess she couldn't because like, other people were involved. Right. In and also when you get money in f- for funding, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know what I mean? Like a st- if people give you all this money for funding and then you make your study, you can't be like, ah, I did, did that, nothing. They yeah, go, okay, nothing. we'll give us our money back. They go, she goes, yeah. <laughs> she has to publish it. Because I really set back women here. Yeah. But so basically she's got to post it, but she goes, she tried to spin it. She goes, in economic research, lots of attention is given to discrimination based on gender or race. With these important issues, there has not been much research on beauty-based discrimination. So she's kind of like trying to figure out a way that she can still sort of be on her, you know, have her mentality of looking for discrimination <laughs> with this. So she, basically she decided, she goes, well, it turns out that women are discriminated against um, on not being hot because men are misogynist probably is like where she's kind of going with this. Yeah. But I can't wait to them starting to sort of put that stuff into practice where they're just like, you know, oh, we're going to give an extra, you know, uh, like a little bit of an extra point for ugly girls on the test. <laughs> like, who's the fucking girl that's going to step forward and be like, here for my extra point? I'm here for my extra point here. I mean, some like of these ugly, models, maybe. ugly affirmative actions, a I, tough one. I to mean, pull I had this girl's Instagram pulled up and I actually, like, really, I know it's, I'm so late to this party. I'm not even late, but I'm just like, I can't believe this chick's a model, like a successful model. 
Yeah, you and Jordan Peterson both had a problem with it. I mean, I mean, I don't like. It just makes like you're talking about the article from before. The article from before, yeah. Like, because I just pulled it up to see about like, what we we're talking you're about. Stuck on that. Well, I just I have it in front of me, and I'm just like, not she's like not terrible. Just looks like someone's aunt. She's like a fucking dude. She's like a B squad chick. She's like you know I don't know. Uh huh. Just, uh, well, she wouldn't be getting good marks in the thing. But if they started no. saying like, "Hey, we're gonna do affirmative action against beauty," like Harvard's like, "Oh, we're gonna only let like so many hot people." In. <laughs> like it's so funny to be like dating the girl that's getting affirmative action for being gross. <laughs> Like who would ever? How would you ever implement like beauty affirmative action? Yeah, and then people would. I mean, that would be so easy to game too. Everybody would just be making themselves all look. Grumpy. I'm here for my paycheck. <laughs> yeah, I'm here for my paycheck. <laughs> Can you imagine that every guy's got a Danny Polishuk mask on? It's like one of those fucking. <laughs> it's like one of those movies where they like. That's- but instead of making the ugly chick hot, they're making the hot chick ugly. That's my I'm joke doing. where you just, uh, my favorite types of jokes where you just put the, yeah, it is, it's shallow Hal, but, but when you, <laughs> when you shallow Hal, for the, but when you can do the jokes where you just, uh, the, you didn't insert the whoever's name. Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> it's me, I told you, my, you know my favorite one, yeah, but yeah. It's the, 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 there's a midget, this, and uh, there are these, these little people, and they were, the Guinness Book of Records said they're giving $10,000 to anyone who gets any record, and the one guy's got the smallest hands, like it probably comes back, he goes, oh my God, I just got a ten thousand dollars. The other guy because I have small feet. I could probably comes back. Got the ten thousand dollars, dude. You guys got to try this. Get, and the one guy goes, I mean, I've got a tiniest dick. I mean, maybe I can get that. <laughs> he goes to the Guinness Book of Records. He goes, oh my. He goes, I got the smallest dick. He tries again. Then he comes back, storms in. The other little people. Did you get the money? He goes, who the fuck is Danny Polishuk? <laughs> Classic. Yeah, classic. <laughs> you pick anyone's name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got fun with that one. Yeah. yeah. Solid. <laughs> and walking around with it. Fucking trying to get their ugly points. <laughs> <laughs> walking around with a Danny Bush. Like that. Yeah. Quick break here because the Fellas Fellas Tour is coming to Portland, Phoenix, Plano, Toronto, Buffalo, and Boston has been added for all the people who have been requesting Boston over the years. Toronto is more than half sold out. Four shows, so you're going to want to get on that. Come see me in Portland. Don't let these hipsters be the reason that we don't have lots of people at that show. Tickets at RyanLongComedy.com. Speaking of hotties, <laughs> speaking more, of more models. Speaking of, I have a good transitions this week, huh? Yeah, I did a pretty. I got smooth fucking article transitions. Speaking of hotties with bodies, I want to give a shout out to the winner of uh, the Miss Local Miss America pageant. Mm-hmm. A beautiful woman, biologically born a male, just what won the matter? pageant. Not well, the reason I'm bringing that up is this is the first time that they've allowed trans people uh, to compete as women in this competition. Yeah. And we are currently one for one. Nice. She's a fucking rocket. She's a rocket? Absolutely just a rocket. Uh, You know, some bouncers at some bars might not see it that way. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Imagine fresh off the Miss America. Let's go celebrate at whatever this place was. And then they're like, uh... (laughs) <laughs> no, yeah, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, so no, the no. girls Not about for any money. The girls about three hundred, three bills. Yeah, you know, probably two eighty. I will say, craziest thing in the whole thing. It's probably, and maybe this is debatable, but not the worst looking of them all. Is that true? There she was, was like real, really big. I know. I mean, I'm kind of joking, obviously, woman. but no, she, she's, she's no. There was worse. Lo- there was not worse looking ones. But they were all like, dude. It was like, it was like a pageant of sixes. They weren't hot. There was a few. none of them were even like. You're like. Because I guess this is the feeder for the Miss America. But you're, you're, like none of them were Miss America. The feeders, their coaches. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, her coach. But like you're like none. They're all sixes. Yeah, yeah. There were there were. I agree. It was like Miss in Miss the Six America. <laughs> six. It was kind of weird. Yeah. But this one beautiful woman. Because like you look at the you go like who should have won this and I go like I don't know. I'd like to see the losers. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. I was look. I did and I go like who should have won and I'm like I don't know. No, no, those were the girls from other cities, weren't they? No, those were all the girls from that that she beat. That she beat in the and then she, Some people, Rhode some Island people are saying it's rigged and the judges, you know, were wanted to pick someone as trans which in my opinion they would just be in sore losers yeah i mean how when someone trans how could you woman, even know the person's never been in a beauty competition in their life yeah they were a male their whole life um 
just decided to, you know, I'm going to enter, become a woman, enter a beauty competence. Waltz in, Waltz is into beauty competitions. Yeah. Destroys, destroys. in first competition they've ever participated in. Yeah. I mean, this is a hero. And uh, do you know what I was kind of thinking? Won a scholarship? Won a scholarship. Good for uh, her. Good for her. Good for her. Do you know what's pretty funny? Yeah, look up the photo if you have it. Or Tony, put the photo up there. Tony, put it up. Tony, put the photo up there. Uh, do you know what's funny <clears throat> is um, I was thinking that, you know how like the trans people are winning all these sorts of competitions? Yes. And everyone is kind of like, yes, you know, how obviously half the people are not, but like, and everyone, <laughs> everyone's like, you know, they're Literally so beautiful or whatever. 10% of people are like, yes. And then- so I feel like Americans watch um, trans people in competitions the way that Russians have to watch Putin play basketball <laughs> yeah, or hockey. Yeah, hockey. Yeah, totally. You know what I mean? Yeah. You're like, you do not like just before the game, everybody's like, <laughs> like you go to like Sergei Fedorov and you're like, hey, just, just so you know. Yeah. Like don't don't try and like stick check him and steal the puck or anything. Yeah. That's not a good idea. <laughs> Isn't that what it is though? Of course. Like legitimately the same and it's the same repercussions. Like so when you know when Putin plays hockey, they get all these NHL guys and he just destroys them. Yeah, right. He, he puts up ten goals a game. That's like what uh, the trans people winning the competitions is like. And then imagine uh, you let him score more points on you, and then the judge is like, "Oh, Putin again wins," and then you want to speak up. So that won't be good for you. You know no, what I mean? No. If you're the girl that the trans person beats you and you want to speak. Up, that won't be good for no, you. No, no. But, but I mean, it's very similar. I will say though, it's like this is different. This is certainly different, and like I care way less than like the sports stuff. I could give less of a shit about because this, the sports yeah. stuff is still like an objective thing where you go like who had the best time or whatever. Of course, and then your this is just like. <laughs> Miss, Miss Butterface, twenty twenty three. I don't give a shit who wins this thing. <laughs> Also, they announced that uh, trans people uh, in San Francisco are going to get like a guaranteed basic income for being trans. I know. And there was 97 <laughs> different possible pronouns. And one of them was FTX. What? No, it wasn't. Swear to God. What was? Oh, my God. Yeah, there's all these different ones. And then one of them was MTX. One of them was FTX. Well, you'd have to be a moron to live San Francisco and not collect your fucking 15 grand a year. Yeah. Just by saying that you got a different por- pronoun. Yeah. Yo, but that is one of those things where everyone's like, there's like a big social incentive for people to be trans and be like, and now there's a big financial incentive. Financial incentive. I think That's this so was, funny. But I think this is like, they want this. So I, I think people, they need just signatures. Like, I don't think you're actually getting the money yet. They're trying to pass it or whatever. I hope it goes through because it's too. hilarious. I'm moving to San Francisco. I'm moving to San, San Francisco. Hello, that would be a good uh, yeah movie plot line where a guy needs he needs like twelve G's because he owes like his he owes like a gambling bookie a bunch of money yeah so he has to <laughs> so he has to you know what was the guy that uh, he the, he was on the lamb from the police and he dressed up like a girl the old uh, guy uh, that, Robert Durst Robert Durst yeah. it's that he owes like twelve grand exactly to the government and he has one year to pay it so he has to yes but can he live like a woman <laughs> enough to convince the government to give him his check. Yeah. Rob Schneider becomes <laughs> Rob trans. Sh- Rob Schneider is a trans. Yeah. Trans you don't even have to live as a woman. These, some of these things are like nobody knows what they are. What the fuck is FTX? That would be cool. Yeah, you come in, you go, I'm FTX, and you go, what hap- how, do you, how can you prove it? You go, here's some of Danny's money. <laughs> you go to hold up a bill. I identify as not bankrupt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Woo! So, gynecology. Yeah. Uh, this so this basically Huffington posted an article because they started to say why are there so many male gynecologists, right? Yes, and uh, and we all know. We, <laughs> I, think- I mean, the, I'll tell you why there are because when you're a ten year old boy, only ten year old boys do this thing. Ten year old girls do not do this thing. This sure, move, right? That's the answer. Well, they think there might be some sexism involved, and that's why girls aren't being. It's, but it's like a. Str- this is one of the dumbest <laughs> arguments I've ever heard. I love it. This, this gynecologist explains why there's so many men in the profession. Well, it's a little of a boys' club, the gynecology thing, right? I get, but like I've never heard that to be honest. I like every woman I've known has a female gynecologist. No, it's like when you go to the gynecology wing of the university. Yeah, it's just like a bunch of dudes like just, just going, like, <laughs> yeah, they're they're all smelling. <laughs> They're all smelling. Like, they're all lined up, and one guy is just walking along. And they're all like, like to compensate for heights. Like the shorter people are all on like apple boxes and stuff. So it's just like their noses are on one 
strip and the guy just walks. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to get him. What's the password? <laughs> Pussy. <laughs> yeah. Oh, beer man. helmets on, like the fucking beer helmets. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's like such a boys club at the gynecology <laughs> wing of the door. Wait, is this the gyno dorm? When you get when you yeah, like when you get your fucking degree, it's just like a high five, like a boy. No shit, no handshakes, right? It's just like, and then maybe like a cool, <laughs> the dean cool gives handshake. you a high, yeah, the dean gives you a high five. <laughs> You both shotgun a fucking beer. And everyone's got like I Heart Pussy t shirts on. <laughs> That's what I think it is. That's, you know what yeah, I, mean? I think so. They, they only, you know, like, they only have like for, for uh, food at their parties, they only have like clams and tacos. <laughs> yeah, like, very, like, they, <laughs> they do not give up this bit ever. <laughs> it's all pussy everything all, all day. <laughs> so when the girl walks in, what are you guys talking about? Nothing, nothing, nothing. Um, she leaves. Oh, yeah. She so then she walks. All right. Uh, I'll just, uh, see. You. <laughs> All right. I'm gonna take off if you guys aren't partying. And then she closed the door. The guy just falls down from the <laughs> chandelier. <Whoa! laughs> He's hanging over his dear life, and totally naked. <laughs> He's totally naked, yeah. <laughs> He's got like a I love. Pu- He's got. Yeah. A pu- they all got pussy hats yeah, on yeah, for yeah, the wrong has. reasons. <laughs> One reason will blow your mind. I'll tell you this thing first. Dr. Mitra adds that women could also still face sexism in the workplace, though that is changing and acknowledges she issues. um, She raises the issues she has to raise also face women outside the medical profession. One reason will blow your mind and it comes down to hand size. So one of the things that they're saying, you need to get the digits in there. You know what I mean? I don't. Th- I think she was talking about the tools. She says they the use. tools were made for a man's hand. But that makes no sense. Makes no sense. Because you're like, what? So women? Because first off, there are lots of women, and then there's. I'm sure there's lots of small-handed men. Of course, it makes no sense that they're just. <laughs> but but like, how do you get to the point? Like, so what? Guys are like. Cho- choosing their specialization or women choose their specialization I want to be a gynecologist and then so they're now in this like program and then that's when they're figuring out that they can't use the tools yes so they're all dropping out yeah yeah, like, yeah hey why didn't anybody tell us that all these tools are made for guys it makes no sense right yeah and kind of one of the things that they started to get into is they were like, also when people are choosing their profession, the uh, the uh, the gu- the gyno school is like harder and more technical, and women actually prefer like the and less more techni- surgery and there's more surgeries right. involved, which is more of a man thing. Yeah, they were kind of like describing it like that, but it is funny. Just choosing your major is sort of funny. Um, like the idea that you're on your last day and it's like, what do you choose in like, I know that, that, that's everyone's yeah, like, yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh, 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 I've always been under the impression that most gynecologists are still women. Doesn't sound like yeah. it. Uh, they, yeah. they, they, guy knows probably, um, they probably hate the the guys who are like dick doctors. They're probably like, look at the gay boys. <laughs> Imagine you were the gyno frat and then the, like the dick doctor frat comes like across the moves across the street. They must hate each other. Um, look at okay. these gays. So I just had to look this up. I didn't. I'm sorry that I didn't look this up in advance. I just googled percent of gynecologists male. There are over twenty two thousand six hundred fifty eight, which is a very specific number. OBGYNs currently employed in the United States. Eighty five point two percent of all of them are women. So what are they even talking about? I don't know. So Huffington Post says gyno. But it's the Huffington Post. We're, we're fucking hooked in reading the Huffington Post slop right now. Well, they literally said there needs to be more. <laughs> Female it's gynos. Like, and yeah, they, it's like it needs to be a hundred percent. I mean, to be honest, I kind of do agree that it should be a hundred percent. It's just so Probably. weird. Like, to be honest, I, when I go to a dick doctor, I to some degree would rather a guy, is, yeah. even though that's gay. <laughs> yeah, I think so. I mean, he knows. Uh, yeah, he I don't. Wa- the- I don't like. It feels weird to go into the. I told you the one time I went to the doctor's office to get Viagra. Yeah, Cause remember when, yeah, we, yeah. when we used to fucking uh, and we used to sell it too. We, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah what, back, in, back in Toronto. But anyways, I was like, the boys needed a batch, right? Yeah. And we had our guy that we used to go meet in the parking lot and mark him, and then people would <laughs> have to drive. Piece. Oh, this, 
<laughs> no, no. Oh, one, of, <laughs> one of the Viagra dealers did die. Yeah. And he was also another drug dealer. But there was this other guy that did counterfeit Viagra. And you one of it was like 10 guys were in on it. And you drive to Markham and someone would get a shipment for the whole squad, right? <laughs> yeah. Show up with like 400 bucks and meet this guy in a sleazy park. You guys are lot. all like taking little samples in the parking lot to see if they're good. Right. Yes. And then you, you go, yeah, yeah. Let you, me wait. Just, I'll wait. Yeah, you wait. You just wait. There we go. So. Why don't you try some too? Yeah. yeah. yeah, 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 yeah or what are you? Why would you try it? And then you're all just sitting around there hard cocks being like, <laughs> all right, I guess it works. Yeah. It's bizarre, it right? Works. But sometimes when, uh, when it was, you know, short supply or no one could come through, someone would just go to the doctor and go and pay full. Pop and I've probably and done that like a couple times. And the one time I did it, um, and I, w I got a girl doctor. And the first time I was like, you have to do the whole thing. You go, you know, I just like, I don't know. I've been like with my chick. I've been like sort of having trouble, like getting it up. Like is, I've heard of this thing called yeah, yeah, Vice Cialis or, 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 or I don't know. Right. And then, and then this woman, like I've done this, you know, three times, every single time the guy's just like, yeah, yeah. What do you want? Like you think it's Cialis, you think it's Viagra, <laughs> like you dirty dog, like. <laughs> Literally, the do the doctors are like that. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, you're gonna take two if you really want to <laughs> give it to her. But this doctor gonna feel, gonna feel sorry for this, bro. Yeah, you, go, right, <laughs> yeah, you want the milligram? Me. You want her walking? You want the walking funny special? <laughs> Legitimately, well, Paul, it's his favorite. The, probably the funniest joke of all time. This is his bit. But he went to the doctor and he goes, uh, "How many girls he had sex with uh, in the last little bit?" And he was doing the test with this guy, and he goes, "I don't know, like, uh, uh, you know, a few." And he goes, "Different girls?" And he goes, "Yeah." He goes, "Like." Nice. And then, uh, <laughs> no, that was something like that. That's something? where the funniest part. Then he goes, he goes in all girls or girls and guys. And then he goes, uh, yeah, just only girls. He goes, out of boy. Out of boy. See, that's why you can't have, that's why chicks need to so, be OBGYN. And, and then this doctor, the are... female doctor, I was like, yeah, and I don't know. I just, I guess maybe he's stress at work. And he goes, you know, have you considered talking to her about this? Like, that's what the chick said. And I was like, you know, I just really, I feel like I'm. this might be something to try. One of my friends told me about that. And he goes, you know, it's always best to like have communication with your girlfriend. I go, this is why you can't be a fucking... <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're like, do you have a supervisor I can talk yes, to? Yes, honestly, something? is there a man I could talk to? And you know, I got off to the wrong foot because she came in and I go, I'll wait for the doctor. And she goes, I am the doctor. Ooh, I go, fuck. Yeah. I'm cooked. Yeah. I'm You're fucked. leaving empty-handed. <laughs> I'm fucked. You're leaving empty-handed on that one. <laughs> I ended up getting it, but she made me jump through but so she many. she gave you what, like two of them. She probably didn't give me a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I remember that was the thing too. You're like, yeah, they give you two, and you're like, it's not even worth going. It's not even worth going. I, I need. I got nine guys waiting for the <laughs> shipment. I, I'm gonna come in. I go, boys. The shipment's a little light. Boys, grab the pill cutters. <laughs> I can't tell nine fucking yeah. guys with dates tonight that the shipment was light. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Goes, we're gonna have to. We're gonna have to split this up. I remember, I remember even at the time because it was I. This is you know six years ago, so I was doing stand up and stuff. Yeah. I remember being in her office, being like, "Well, this is a bit. This is a bit. <laughs> at least we got something out of this." You know, have you tried just communicating with her? And it's like I, in my head, I'm just like, this "Fuck is, you! Yeah. Get me a male doctor." Yeah, but there's no, yeah. If I was a female doctor, if I was a female and I was getting a new guy, and a man came in, I would hate that. Yeah, most women don't want to do. It's gr yeah, weird. Yeah, I mean, we talked about the one guy. In Italy or whatever, who was like having tricking all the women and having sex with them and stuff. Remember that one dude? Who went yeah, like, you're like it just. So Huffington Post won't be happy until there's another fifteen percent. But yeah. theirs is for sexism. It's just like uh, they. The only answer is like, yeah, it's just kind of weird. You it's kind of I mean? weird, which I, I I don't think anybody disagrees with. The only people who disagree with it are the guys who are gynecologists. Of course. They're like, what's weird about, <laughs> nothing weird about what I'm doing. You're going to fucking pry that pussy out of my cold dead hands. <laughs> yeah, I, just, I just love, just love. That's even weirder production. that they're saying the tools is too, too big <laughs> if it's like 85%. It's even yeah. funnier. Yeah, it just makes no sense. This could also be down. Okay, so gynecology is a slightly more surgical specia specialty compared with uh, obstetrics and surgery has always been a slightly more male dominated area, which again appears to be not quite true. But it says, which can be tricky if you're trying to juggle training with having a family or working part time, and it isn't always easy. So I think what happens is when you want to get this job, there's kind of like a grueling obstacle course of vagina. <laughs> Like when you your final test, it's just like a bunch of Venus fly traps, like giant, like Mario yeah. <laughs> style, like huge ones, and you're just like, and then one eventually one just 
beats you and you go, wah, wah, wah. You got to start from the beginning. The speed, you have to, now you have to pass the speed gyno <laughs> test and they wheel in nine girls with their legs up on the stirrups yeah. and you have to be double handing it like, yeah. <laughs> while putting on new gloves for each one. It's yeah. just very technical. You have to fucking, yeah, you got, you got, you're holding tools in your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's all like just, uh, <laughs> you got the light on your forehead. <laughs> This guy just did nine, nine. Flawless. There's like two fucking announcers. It's on ESPN nine. <laughs> oh, this guy is, he's really getting in there. Oh, it's three fingers. I've never seen this move before. <laughs> All the girls are fucking coming. Yeah. It's, it's absolute mastery. <laughs> <laughs> this is the clam king, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> the, <clam. laughs> the king of clams. <laughs> The sold and the slits. This man is Dr. Ryan Long. Dr. Night. Ryan, the sold and the slits. I've never seen anyone <laughs> put down numbers like this. <laughs> oh, fuck. Can I? Uh... He is the Putin of pussy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, anyways. <laughs> this man is keep... a whole hero. I got a, I got a couple more in yeah, me a couple, yeah, right. <laughs> to make up for my yeah, bad for Ronda Zandis nickname. Yeah. Ron the Con. <laughs> We we cracked him with Ron the Con. Ron the Con. <laughs> Ron the Con. All right, you give me a name for give me a uh, euphemism for vagina, and then I'll come up with the second part. Um, a euphemism for a vagina. Um, um, you know, like a snatch. Snatch, snatch is good. Snatch is good. Sultan of snatch. Sultan, Sultan, Sultan again. <laughs> Sultan. This guy is Sir Snatch a lot because he does not stop, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Boys and girls, whatever she had wrong with her vagina is a thing of the past. <laughs> that yeast infection is long gone. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, they call him Don Yeast Be Gone because. Yeah. Long gone silver is what that yeast is going to be when this guy comes through. This guy's going to be opening up a bakery with all that yeast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, that's just All right, give me one more. Snatch. Uh, I don't know. What, what, what do we have? Snatch, slit, vagina, poontang, cooter, cooter. Oh, yeah, cooter. yeah. This man is the king of cooter. <laughs> <laughs> this guy. This guy is the sultan of cooter. Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He's never met a cooter. He couldn't clean <laughs> out. <laughs> He has a full like power wash oh, he, rig on. And he's got time to spare. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, he's eating an apple. He is in no rush. <laughs> <laughs> he's yeah, still, like cuts to him. He's just like reading a book. Yeah, he's, just, he's so confident. He's like, the tortoise and the hare yeah, type of thing, right? He's he's so, having a tea. Yeah, and then the one girl that has the family, so she didn't part time. Yeah, she yeah, she's yeah. working overtime. This guy's. Yeah, she just, she looks at her watch. The money in the meter just ran out. She's yeah, like, oh, she's gotta God. go do the meter. So this thing's going on. Whereas this guy's just crushing it. You know what I mean? He's, he's got, got like the baby on the front and the back. <laughs> like, he's just like drinking some tea, being like, ah, rich, the king of gooder, ladies and gentlemen. One more. Yeah. <laughs> okay. One more. Uh, the, the cat. Uh, Punani? Yeah, this is the. <laughs> the Prince of Punani. <laughs> yeah, this is the. <laughs> yeah, definitely. The Prince of Poontang. This is the Prince of Punani. <laughs> <laughs> Surprise Poonani's really lasted throughout the years. We like to call this guy Prime Minister Poonani <laughs> because he is not stopping. He is not. Stop it! Whatever these girls came in with, they are not leaving with. <laughs> He's cleaned this thing out. They call him the the liquid death. Because, <laughs> <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, they, people in the industry call him liquid death because whatever's wrong with their pussy is featuring. Huh? <laughs> it's it's going to be up for a quick demise. <laughs> uh, he's done nine v vaginas while well, the girl hasn't even opened up her first stirrup. He goes, uh, that was a nice callback because we are sponsored today by liquid death. <laughs> yeah, we are also sponsored by liquid death. Um... He's just delivered a baby with his feet, ladies and gentlemen. So, um, okay, the last thing that I feel like I have to bring up, so we got to get to it before yeah. it's too late, is so with all of this stuff with Kanye West and Kyrie Irving, yeah, yeah. I mentioned in passing last time that it's been so funny that Sean King, and with the Chappelle stuff, yeah. that it's turned Sean King's post, who's like all he posts all day long is like, this guy said something racist, cancel him. Cancel him. This guy said something, you know, sexist, cancel him. Yeah. Um, here's he was, a cop that I think, uh, you know. Looked uh, at someone looked the wrong at, way. You know, did something bad, arrested the wrong guy. 
cancel him. He goes, I want his name. I want his number. And then yeah. they find his name and number. Send people to his they house. Dox they dox him. He's already him. post people's houses. All this sort of stuff. This yeah. is how, this is the world he lives in, right? He's the grift king. Except with Kyrie Irving, now he's slowly started to be like, uh, I don't know about this Kyrie Irving thing. And now his posts legitimately are just like... Uh, a, 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 an essay on why cancel culture is bad oh. and it is it, he is one step away from like you know getting a show at the daily wire it's, i mean generally though the people like this lack self-awareness very often i don't get uh, yeah because he's like, yeah he's just like he does like he goes one minor infraction in this guy's life's owner and you go that was your last nine posts yeah it's like it's so obvious to us but like for him you're like yeah he's like he's not putting these things together so this is what he said. I'm going to read a couple of them because it's so funny. Nothing that Kyrie Irving said or did warrants this. He's already paid a huge price for sharing a link of a popular black history documentary um, that he did not even understand had anything anti-Semitic in it. If someone uh, posted a thing- He that watched maybe, it. Yeah, but I go, if you, if some, if, do you think that in any of his posts, if someone shared a link- to something that was like a Candace Owens documentary. Do you think he would be... Well, I mean, he just shared it. Okay, Sh Sean King. If Luka... I've said this before, but if Luka Doncic on Twitter goes, hey, check out this documentary, and the documentary had all this stuff about how slavery was fake, would you just be like, why are we punishing Luka <laughs> Doncic? <laughs> What did Luca do? Would you be saying he owned it? He apologized for it? Not a single person actually believes he's anti-Semitic. <laughs> I was like, that's the, I'm not racist. You know what I mean? <laughs> well, what about like the the girl that got Meg, when Megan Kelly got fired from blackface where you're like, no one says she's racist. You yeah, know? And she literally was just asking a question. Yeah, yeah. Because he isn't. But Nike is also dropping him? What for? His team already suspended it. Even that was a lot. Has that not been enough? And he, he, he goes, There's, it turns out, that this is going a little far. This whole taking people's <laughs> yeah, jobs away for yeah. saying things. It's a little cancel culture thing. You know, I'm loving. And who invented cancel culture, Sean? Ah, we circle. There is so funny. And then Dave Chappelle also he goes. Dave Chappelle's monologue was masterful beyond the fact that his jokes were hilarious. He was vulnerable, and instead of embracing the fact that Dave uh, did this. Jewish advocacy groups like the ADL are labeling him anti-Semitic. It's very frustrating because that label can ruin your career. <laughs> and it's like, are you fucking on Mars right now? Yeah. Your whole thing is trying to give people labels that can ruin their yeah, career. Calling anybody that is your, anything racist. Yo, that's his whole deal. Yeah, is calling people labels that can ruin their career. Uh -huh. Yeah. It's Glass houses. The post before this was him posting Steven Crowder and being like, people should re reach out to their sponsors to try to get him to lose the sponsors for yeah. something that he said. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you don't like it when it comes for Yo, you. Yo, isn't huh? that crazy? Not that I even agree with the Kyrie Irving thing, but... No, no, I'm just, I'm, my point is like, it's just so funny that, she, that she, uh, now Sean King's like, he'll literally has one post that's like, you know, find this guy's name, fire him. This guy with little evidence, I think he's racist, he should lose his job. Cancel culture is out of control. Here's another guy he's that like, I think's racist. Dude, he's he's the fucking gr like he's doing this like grift juggling act where he's like juggling like the swords, you know, like <laughs> like he's doing this like on high. We goes whoa, like it's yeah the hardest level because he's uh -huh. like yeah, it's a tough one. It kind of is a little like that, huh? Yeah. Um, but yeah, been, it's been uh, hard. Did his, did his Twitter get nuked? I don't think he has Twitter anymore. I think oh. he got in trouble for being, people were saying, for stealing, all, stealing all the money. And so I think he, just, he deleted his Twitter. Pretty sick. You could just like be like, hey, you're there. stealing. He goes, I'll just leave Twitter problem solved. It's harder to drag people on Instagram because <laughs> yeah, I know. it's easier to drag on Twitter because you can just quote, everyone quote tweets you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Interesting. Um, so anyways, the Dave Chappelle monologue. Um, what did you think as a uh, chosen? Did you think it was good? As a Zionist? Yeah, I thought it was as not a bad. Zionist. Yeah, I thought it was not bad. I don't think he said anything was... I'm not the biggest Chappelle fan. No, I, I, which I, is I, why I, I mean, I didn't it. think it was like the funniest thing in the world or anything. I, but, no, I, was but I, just was, I did like this one, though. No, I, no, I, like, I liked it, but I was like, you know, it's the type of thing, I mean, like, we kind of know the, the ins and outs. You're like, he spends four days rehearsing it. Like he probably writes it, you know, like on the Monday or something, and then. Do you he, think that's true? I think he spent some more time on this one. I, I don't know. Some like, I mean, stuff in there. 
Really? Yeah. I thought it was just, I, I, I don't know. No, they I take those seriously. Like even Louis used to say, he goes, when I was doing the monologues, like I treat that the same way I'm treating a special. Like the same with Burr. Like those guys treat the SNL monologues. Like but I feel like a, they a just don't special. have them. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe I don't know how I bet much you time did it the same. What? Well, I bet you he did it the same way he would do any other special, but just a 15 Well, but that's what I'm saying. But he's talking about all this stuff that's so current. You're like, how much time could you possibly have to be But that was this? only the first like few minutes. Yeah. 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 And some I, of those jokes probably could have been repurposed in it, but I know yeah, what you mean. Yeah. Yeah. But anyways, I don't know. I thought it was fine. Nothing he said was like. Oh, and the and the uh, so again, Lorne Michaels, the guy who calls the shots, there is Jewish. Like he heard that. Although apparently, someone said that he gave them a different fake thing and then just did that. Yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, which I don't know if that's true or not. Well, but I don't think nothing he said was like I thought it was on a NPR said Dave Chappelle monologue disappoints on Saturday oh, night. Does it NPR? Yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, yo, if you make like a comedy special and you get like. Uh, that you're popular enough that you get tons of press and all of it's how great it is, that means it sucks. Yeah. Yeah, it's, I mean, Hannah Gatsby. Of course, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, the it was so funny with the their article because they were, they still, because they, they go, Dave Chappelle, who we recognize as a comedic genius, uh, despite the fact that he has very abhorrent views on trans people and we really don't agree with him on his views on this and also he's sexist so it's like you're but like they still have to believe that they really like him even though they go i haven't like even though i've disagreed with everything he's done on for the last six specials i have uh because he hasn't said like the liberal white person consensus <laughs> yeah but i but i still will admit that uh, he's genius because for some reason i have to think that yeah, i have to think that, yeah it's literally like we're disappointed that he didn't say the things we think they even in this article, they basically did say exactly that. Yeah. They, they goes, you know, he talked about Kanye West, but he failed to mention that Kanye West likes Hitler. And he goes, it was just funny being like, uh, listening to like a comedy thing and just being like, Int- he failed to mention. Yeah, yeah, like they're like uh, critiquing like an essay or something. Yeah, he told you how he feels. Yeah, he told you. How he feels. And also, you're like the Kanye West thing with Hitler is like that's not substantiated at all. That was like a rumor. Like I don't think anybody's. We've come out and definitively been like, yeah, this is actually fact. Sure. Like, it's, and it could have been some wacky thing where he's like, I, well, it's like I, rumor, I respect. It's like a fucking fourth hand rumor. No, but like, it could have also been one of those things where someone says like, well, you have to look at every dictator for like, you know. Why were they capable to do something? There's something to take from every. You know, people say well, that. Well, I, like, I felt like I mean? when really when they were the Kanye stuff was like a month ago when it was full. He and then they like this article came out on New York Post, which I was like, this is, uh, this was like maybe one of the most bullshit things I've ever heard. But they were saying how Kanye, his album Ye is like he wanted to call it Hitler. Like they came out with this article and they're like Kanye West yeah, wanted to call this and too. you go no, can't imagine. There's no fucking way. Kanye West is like, you know what would be a good name for this album? Hitler. <laughs> yeah. No, didn't happen. Probably didn't happen. I don't think so either. <laughs> I would definitely can't confirm or deny that. Yeah. And, and they it's said- only Kanye knows. What, he goes, uh, one line that stuck out um, before his scattered applause, he said, I know Jewish people have been through some terrible things, but you can't blame that on black Americans. And they said, what does that have to do with the professional athlete posting a link to anti-Semitism with no explanation? But again, it's a Chinese guy who's doing this, who's punishing him, not a Jewish person. Like, I guess you could say Adam Silver is the head of the league, but like the league didn't suspend him. The team suspended him. And he's Chinese? He's Chinese. He's an Alibaba guy. He's okay. one of the Alibaba guys. So that's the guy that's suspended. Yeah. He, he, it's like he's not being suspended by a Jewish person. I mean, again, I guess you could say that the, right. the head of the league is, but like the league didn't suspend him. Yeah. And I guess in that thing, it would be like what Dave Chappelle is saying is like, um, you know, he was obviously when you go, you can't blame that on American, uh, black Americans. He's like making a broader point of yes. like, you whatever, right? Of course. But it was also like, when, with NBR being like, hey, you you made like a connection to racism. It's like, you guys have like, bloggers have released thousands of articles about why knitting's racist. And you're like, I don't know if this connection is so strong. But I, my, I guess the point I'm making is like, it's just so funny that it's like forced people to be on the opposite side that they're usually on. Yeah, normally, I know. Yeah, it's having all these conflicting opinions at the same time. And I think it's, yeah, they're... they're everyone's just like, why won't you just think the thing that white liberals think? (laughs) Yes. You don't need a reason. Like, can you just get with the program? Yeah. There was a lot of, uh, of, uh, you know, that idea that it's like easier to train, uh, like, uh, uh, like, a a smart dog's easier to train. Yeah. There's like a lot of like research that I've seen about how it's like, 
people with like 120 IQ kind of, or maybe like 110, 115, like a little above average mm-hmm. are the most susceptible to, you know, becoming part of cults and ideologies yeah, yeah. and all that. Sort because of they stuff. think they're smarter. They're too smart to get roped up in that. So they can never. And then they're also smart enough to rationalize in like interesting ways. Yeah. That's, I heard something about that with the Sam Bankman free thing where the reason why he blew it up. Cause he could like, he's, was like being he thought he's so smart i mean he is obviously really smart but he's like so smart where he can never look in the mirror and be like oh you're fucking this up really badly right because you can always rationalize it. yeah you're constantly rationalizing like what well, everything you're doing whereas like if you're a dumber person you can't come up with like like a uh like it's almost the same way that if they get caught doing something bad, you can come up with excuses fast. You also can do that with your own brain. Yeah, exactly. Whereas like if some, you know, 70 IQ person is like, hey, did you steal all these cookies? They're just like, uh, um, you know what I mean? Hey, it's where's ca- these $8 billion? And you're like, it's. Well, actually, you know, you, you can yeah, come well, up with actually, more excuses. It's yeah. gone. <laughs> Gambled it. All right, we're going to announce here, we're going to do the, uh, when I'm going back to Toronto to do my shows, that Danny's now going to come, and yes, we're going to do- catch me at, in Toronto. The 16th, 17th, we're going to do a live podcast in Toronto. Live Thursday, boys cast. The night before, the first live podcast. The first podcast. ever, so back the first in the one, dot, and we'll the have six. The, and we'll have the tickets the on The Sultan of the first. Six. The Sultan of Six. That's pretty exciting. But, and subscribe to the Patreon. You already know what it is. I got like, we had a lot to talk about this week. So I got yes. like five or six. Like, there's a good one that articles. I really, there's a w- Yeah, one that we I, didn't get to on the main there's one. There's one oh, that I really want to Read discuss. the title, Little Taster. It is, um, Our Marriage Therapist Fired Us. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's I have, because there's a very interesting... <laughs> dynamic here that support the boys patreon.com slash the boys guys so please. we can do our bug men off and subscribe to my youtube oh channel. yeah 2000 we do the bug men off yes